It's that time of year again when respiratory viruses are getting more active. And although we've been focused on COVID for the last few years, don't forget about the flu. Anyone over six months old can get the flu shot and there are lots of good reasons to get it. Let's get into it. So the flu is caused by a virus called influenza. And that virus is found year round in Canada and the US, but it tends to peak in the fall and winter, which is why they call that the flu season. And although it varies, generally speaking, it starts in October, it gets to a maximum anytime between December and March, and it usually settles before May. And flu affects a lot of people. In any given flu season, about five to 10% of adults and 20 to 30% of kids will get the flu, which ends up being millions of people. And it can be a nasty infection. People typically get fever, cough, severe muscle aches and fatigue. They can get a headache, chills and sore throat. And kids especially can get things like nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Now most people will recover, but it can take a week to 10 days. And people will often tell you that the flu feels like the worst cold they've ever had. And people do get complications from the flu. Young children, people 65 and older, pregnant people, and people with chronic medical conditions are especially prone to complications, particularly severe pneumonia from the flu. It can also trigger other things like inflammation of the heart, called myocarditis, inflammation of the brain, which we call encephalitis, or of the muscles, which we call myositis. And depending on the season, up to about 50,000 people die of the flu each year in the US. But that's where the vaccine comes in. Every year we get a brand new flu vaccine. And the reason we need a new formulation every year is that the virus is constantly changing and evolving. The main types of influenza virus that cause these seasonal epidemics are called influenza A and influenza B. But which one will be dominant and which subtype of each will be dominant varies every year. And the way they figure out which strains to cover in the vaccine is actually a really interesting and complicated process. So every year, the flu starts in the Southern Hemisphere, where their flu season is actually sometime between April and September, which is winter for them. So the Northern Hemisphere countries like Canada and the US look at what happens in the flu season in the Southern Hemisphere to try to predict which strains are going to move north for our flu season. And it's not a perfect correlation and the timing and the type of flu can change, but it does give us a starting point. And that's part of what's called the World Health Organization's Global Influenza Surveillance and Response System. That's a collection of almost 150 laboratories in 115 countries around the world that are constantly monitoring for flu viruses. So in late February or early March, they look at all the data around which flu viruses have caused disease in the past year, how those viruses are changing and what the disease trends are like. And they basically choose the most likely candidates for the upcoming flu season. And because that's not a perfect science, to maximize the chances of covering the right variants, the flu shot is typically what we call a quadrivalent vaccine, which means it actually includes coverage for the four most common predicted strains of flu in that particular season. And that's two types of influenza A and two types of influenza B. So the process of getting next year's flu shot will actually start before this year's flu season is even over. And part of the reason we need so much lead time is that it takes time for manufacturers to produce and stockpile those millions of vaccine doses that are needed around the world. And the reason that takes so long is that most flu vaccine is actually grown in eggs. So once the viruses are identified, they're injected into fertilized chicken eggs. Those are then incubated for several days to allow the viruses to replicate. Then the fluid containing those millions of copies of the flu virus is extracted from those eggs and it's purified. Then it gets chemically inactivated, so it can't actually harm us, but it can still trigger that immune response that will allow us to build up antibodies against the flu. And finally, that vaccine gets packaged into a formulation and distributed. And it takes millions of eggs to do this. In fact, it's about one egg per flu shot. And that's a pretty inefficient way to make the vaccine. The good news is that we do have newer techniques that don't require eggs, and they're starting to be used more commonly, including making the vaccine in cell cultures or making the vaccine synthetically through what's called recombinant technology. The other thing is that we have more and more options for how people can get their flu vaccine. For example, there's a standard dose, there's a higher dose for people over 65. And if you're afraid of needles, some people can actually get a nasal formulation that you basically spray into your nostril. And others can get it through a needle-free injector that uses a high pressure jet to push it into your muscle. All that being said, you may have heard that the flu vaccine doesn't work very well. 
And the reality is that because of the uncertainty of which strains will be circulating in flu season every year, and the calculated guessing that sort of goes into figuring that out, they don't always get it right. And these vaccines don't work as well as your typical childhood vaccines. All that being said, they still work very well. The first thing to be aware of is even if you catch a flu that is different than the four strains covered in the vaccine, because flu strains tend to be similar, getting the shot basically primes your body to recognize and fight all strains of the flu. So you still get some protection. In a typical flu season, the flu vaccine will offer about a 60% protection from getting the flu. For example, last year, even in kids and teenagers under 18, the vaccine reduced the chances of a symptomatic flu infection by 71%. But it's not just that. Even if you do catch the flu, having been vaccinated means that the flu will be less severe because your body has antibodies that will enable you to more quickly fight it off. So instead of a severe illness that might have you in bed for a week, if you're vaccinated, you might experience something like a mild cold. And if you look at people who do catch the flu, chances of dying from it are about 30% lower if they're vaccinated. Now, every benefit comes with a risk. Luckily, the risks of the flu vaccine are very small. Like any treatment, a small percentage of people, about one or two per million, can get a severe allergic reaction to the shot. And although they're grown in eggs, because so little egg protein actually makes its way into the vaccine, even if you have an egg allergy, you can still safely get the flu shot. Now there is a neurological condition called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which has been connected to the flu vaccine in the past, but there's been a massive review combining 22 different studies recently that did not show any increased risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome after the flu shot. In fact, what they did show was that having the flu or a flu-like illness in itself actually increased the risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome by about tenfold. So as usual, it's the virus we need to worry about as opposed to the vaccine. So a lot goes into getting a brand new flu vaccine every year. The flu is a nasty infection. The vaccine makes you less likely to get it. And even if you do get it, the vaccine makes that infection a lot less severe. Almost anyone can get it. And if you are going to get the latest COVID vaccine, which has also been updated, you can get one shot in this arm and the other shot in this arm, and both vaccines will remain just as effective and you won't have a higher chance of side effects. So even if you're young and healthy, think about getting a flu shot this year. For more on health and science, subscribe to the feed.